So real forgiveness includes forgiving and putting down the sins and be willing to bless them. And when we see them, we still are nice to them. Hopefully we can change them so that they will change their life and behavior with the help of God. So that's a reminder of people who don't forgive each other. A, a warning. And then how? Okay, f about love. Now very often we go back to the first theme, to love one another. One another. Now, um, the how, I, very often the first part of the how is I will talk about hindrances to love other people. Now, if the theme is love other people, hindrances. Why people don't love other people? There are a few reasons. Selfishness, laziness, uh, self-centered, uh, or hating other people. That's why they, they don't like people. They are angry with the whole world. So they cannot forgive other people. So they cannot love other people. So how can we take care of those problems? So in the how, I always talk about the hindrances to that behavior or that nature. So here is about loving one another. So what stops people loving other people? It's selfishness. Many people just think about themselves. Even when they go to church, they just want, want to be safe and they want the blessings of God. They don't care about what other people are facing. So they, they don't have the love for other people. And then also uh, self-centered. They just center in themselves. Uh, so how can we remove that? We say, you know, when we love other people, God is very happy with us. God is very happy when we put our attention not just on ourselves. I want, I want to put my attention on other people, how to bless them. Okay, the first is self-selfish. Selfish means I just want to bless myself. I just want to help myself. I don't help other people. And the second is self-centeredness. is centering, thinking about myself only. I think about my needs. I think about what I want only. And also, some people are shy, so they don't love because they just don't want to talk with people they don't know well. So that's something as Christians we should overcome and learn to speak to strangers and care about them, even strangers on the street talk with them and be kind to them. Uh, also, some people just have this hatred for mankind. Even after they're saved, they, they don't like people. They, don't, they, they think of all the bad things that other people do and then they are unhappy. So this needs to be taken care of. You know, why do people have problems? Because they have sins. And we have problems too because we are sinners. So that's why God sent us to love them and help them to bring them to Jesus because they, they are living in sin, they are controlled by sin. Now there are two responses to people's sin, uh, sinfulness. The first response is, oh they are desperate, they are suffering, I want to forgive them, I want to bless them, I want to help them. This is one response. But some people's response is, I hate them, I dislike them, I don't like them. I reject them. So. So those two responses, which one do you want to take? So we want to take care of our you know, hatred for people, hatred for mankind. Uh, or some people this, we say, well, he has mistreated me, so I don't like them. So those are things we need to remove and say, I want to forgive them and want to find ways to, to bless them. Okay, so that's uh, removing hindrances to love people. And then practically how to love. First, we can pray for people, for their needs, care about them, and listen to them, talk with them, and know their needs, and then we pray for them, and we help them as much as we can. And we be kind to them. Uh, when we come to church, we think of also blessing other people, and we welcome people, and we talk with them. And then if they have needs, we would want to put time to help them. We want to lead them to Jesus Christ, or we want to pray for them, uh, whatever we can do to bless them or to be kind to them, listen to their needs. So these are ways, practical ways, how we can love one another. Okay, now this way of preaching, this six, uh, uh, the sixth point is challenge. Challenge, that means now we know the importance of loving, can we start to love one another? 
Can you be kind to the person next to you? Can you say something nice to the person next to you? Now, in, in our church and in the church of many, uh, in many churches, they, they do ask the people immediately say something to the person next to you. So that's something we can do and then and not just saying, but we continue to do it. Okay, now, um, let me briefly go through this again and say that the uh, three, four, five are the most important. Okay, so first we have the interpretation of passage and second is negative example, how people are not following that and and uh, positive examples and also the why, you know, why people don't love. We can talk about there. Why? Because of laziness, because of self-centeredness, selfishness, and hatred of mankind. And then God's nature and grace, how God's nature is so wonderful and His grace, uh, His, how He blesses us. Now, why do we want to talk about God's nature and grace? The reason is so that people like God. When people like God, then they want to obey God and they will, will trust in God and they will rejoice in God. In the preaching, it's not just about action, it's about coming to God. So our preaching is mainly to draw people to the goodness of God so they will come to God and be changed by God and obey God. But many people's preaching is mainly about action. You what you do, what you do, what you do. Now it's is right, is right that we should change our behavior. But Christianity is not just about changing behavior. Christianity is about having a relationship with God and be changed by God to follow God's way. So it's very important that in our preaching, in our talking, we always talk about the goodness of God. We talk about how wonderful God is and how good God is and draw people to obey Him. So that's why we should talk about God's nature and grace and that's very important. And then reminder and warning that remind people if they don't obey what, what will happen and the warning, uh, what the consequences and how, how can we uh, follow God and obey God. Now, three, four, five are the most important parts because three would let people see how wonderful God is and four would give them the warning, the law part, that what we should do and, and uh, the warning if we don't do it and then how. So, practically how we do it, okay? Now, let me use other examples. Let me see. Okay, I have other examples here. And um, now this example here um, that um, I did not include all the points here, but I will, I will uh, ex you know, in the process I'll explain it more, okay? So Matthew 10, 41 to 42, these three verses, it talk about that uh, when, you know, uh, if you in a prophet's name receive a prophet, that you receive the reward of a prophet. And then, uh, and then in a name of righteous man, that you receive a righteous man, uh, that you receive his reward. And then, uh, uh, if anyone does it to, you know, uh, give a cup of cold water, in a disciple's name, give a couple cold water to a little one, he will by no means lose his reward. So this uh, two verses talk about that if you're not a prophet, but if you receive a prophet, you receive his reward. And if you are not a righteous man, but you receive a righteous man, you receive the reward of a righteous man. And then if you don't find a prophet and you don't find a righteous man, you just find a little one and you know a, an ordinary Christian, then you uh, give him a cup of water. Even when you don't, you're not doing a great thing, you just give a cup of cold water to a little one, you by no means lose a reward. So Jesus is saying, now I'm explaining this passage now, I'm explaining this. So Jesus chooses to say, it is not hard to please Him. So if you are not a prophet yet, you are not a preacher yet, but you receive a prophet or receive a preacher, receive someone who serves God, then you receive His reward. So even when you have not come to the level uh, of a, you know, a, a, a minister or a, uh, 
someone who, who is, uh, you know, a prophet, then still, if you receive a prophet or a preacher, you can receive his reward. So it's, it's not hard. And then if you don't find a great, great preacher or prophet, you just find a good Christian, a righteous man. And then you, in the name of a righteous man, you give him a cup of co uh, that you receive him, then you uh, receive his reward. And then the easiest part, if you don't even find a righteous man, you just find an ordinary Christian. And then you give him a cup of cold water. Now, it's not talking about doing a great thing. It's not talking about bringing him to uh, Jesus, to believe in Jesus, or bringing him to, to love Jesus, to obey Jesus. Uh, it's not talking about that. It's talking about the easiest thing, to just to give a, cold, a cup of cold water. Then you by no means lose a reward. So Jesus is saying it's easy to receive a reward from God when you sincerely bless the people around you. You bless the prophet, the righteous man, or even a little one. You by no means lose the reward. So I'm interpreting this passage to, to say that Jesus is saying it's not hard to please God and it's not hard to receive His reward. Uh, so that encourages us to do good things to other people. So grace, okay? First point here, God treasures the prophets, the righteous man and the little one. So those, the prophets and the righteous man and the little ones are all important in God's sight. And He wants to bless them. So when people do good to them, God will reward them. So God wants to bless these people. God wants to bless all the Christians and all the ministers. So if someone blesses the ministers and the Christians, God is very happy and God will remember that and reward them. And the second point, God give us the motivation and the strength to bless these people. So He give us uh, the strength and the motivation to bless these people. And then three, even when we sincerely do a small thing for God, He's very happy and will reward us richly. Even when we do a small thing to just uh, give, a cup, uh, give a cup of cold water. And then why many Christians don't do good to other people. So that's uh, the, the, uh, the reason why. And then the warning. Jesus warned those who don't do good to others that they will be thrown into the fire prepared for the devil and his angels. And then six. How we can have stronger motivation to do good to God's servants and any little one. So how can we have a stronger motivation to do good to other people? So this um, here we find many points about God's grace. Now if we go back to this outline and I use the passage there to preach a message, okay? I'm now in a way of preaching, interpreting. Now I did that already, so I'm not going to do that. Examples and how that, um, you know, this passage tell us to do good to the prophet, to the, uh, it doesn't say pro pastors, but it would include pastors also, and to any good Christians and to any uh, ordinary Christian. So the Bible tells us to do that. And there are Christians who are always nice to people. But you might have heard stories about people telling you, I don't want to go to church because I went to church and I was hurt by a Christian. Have you heard that story before? That some Christians have hurt them by their words, by their criticism, by their rejection of them. So Jesus tells us to love other people. But it's true that many Christians just don't pay attention to that and then by the words, instead of blessing people, sometimes uh, the Christians would hurt other people and then cause them to stumble and cause them even to leave the church. So that's serious, isn't it? So we need to pay attention not to cause people to stumble, but we want to bless other people. And then God's nature and grace. Now God wants to bless any, any person. And he wants to bless all, you know, any levels of Christians, the, the prophets, the pastors, the uh, missionary, anyone who dedicates life, or any Christians, uh, you know, any 
God-loving Christian and also any ordinary Christian. God is very, God is full of love for them. God cares about them. And uh, so God has this nature and God wants to bless us. So just now I talk about God's nature, His nature of loving. And in His grace, remember I talk about the, about the three points. First, God accepts us. God receives us. Second, He gives us the heart to receive other people. As Christians, we have this motivation to care about these other people. The Holy Spirit will give us this motivation to care about other Christians, to care about other people. So, so that's the second part. He changes us. And the third part, when we obey Him and treat other people nicely, then God will remember it and bless us. So at least we can talk about these three points about God's grace. And then, reminder and warning. If we don't do it to, you know, to the Christians around us, we don't treat them nicely, we hurt them, or we uh, gossip about them. Now, many, many Christians, they will go home and then they gossip about the pastor, gossip about other Christians, and they will talk about, oh, how uh, the pastor's sermon is not so good. Now, um, it's no point to talk to other people about that. If you want to talk to uh, uh, your pastor, then you go to the pastor and give him some suggestions. Uh, of course, you don't want to give him pressure. You just uh, give him some suggestions. You can, you can give him a response. And as a pastor, we should all, always listen to people too. So uh, the warning, that some Christians, they will gossip about the pastor and when they go home or gossip about the other Christians, oh, they're sleeping in the church and they're doing these things. Now, if we see them sleeping, we pray to God, Lord, help me how to find a way to help them, how to find a way to, to bless them. And then, uh, so that's the warning. If we criticize people or judge people, you know, that the Bible says, you know, how you judge people, you also be judged. So how? How can we receive people? So first we want to remove the hindrances. So in the how, I always want to remove the hindrances. The hindrances of uh, sometimes Christians dislike other Christians because they say, I've seen some faults in them. Now it's true that all Christians have faults. But when we see the faults, we'll pray for them and we'll say, Lord, give me the wisdom and the gentleness so that we can talk to them and try to help them instead of having anger and frustration when we see their, see their problems. So we want to remove this frustration for people, except that people have faults, except that people have weaknesses. So we handle this negative feeling toward Christians. And then we want to uh, receive them. And the first step we do it is by just be nice to them, talk to them, welcome them, uh, listen to them, and respond to them, make friends with them. So these are things that we can do to, um, uh, to accept one another. And then when there are Christians in trouble, we want to help them as much as we can, and we want to be kind to them and be motivated that whenever we are nice to them, we, it's building up. Uh, God is happy with us and we are building up that, that Christian also. So also we can ask for God, ask God for a strategy to go to higher levels of blessing other people. First, we help them with their physical needs. We accept them personally. And then secondly, we can help them with their spiritual life. And then next level, we can help them to start to serve God. And also, we can appreciate what they do and motivate them to go to a higher level of serving God. So we can go to different levels of treating other Christians nicely and accepting them, receiving them, and be kind to them. Okay, so this is a, uh, a way that it's a practical message. Why are the points practical? First, we need to interpret the passage, and then second, explain the problems of people in this uh, about this point that we talk about this particular nature of God 
And then we see God's nature and grace is so wonderful to attract people to follow God and love God. And then the warning to tell them not to sin. And then how, how can we follow that? Now, we must remember that if we talk about the theme of loving people, then all of this should relate to loving people. If the theme is about forgiving, then it's, all the points should be about loving, uh, forgiving other people. If the theme is about joy, then all the points should be about joy. Now, when it's about joy, then you don't talk about loving other people. Uh, so the, you stick to that theme you, you have. When we talk about wisdom, then it's always about wisdom. Wisdom will be interpreting the passage to talk about the uh, importance of wisdom and an example of how people don't have wisdom. Some Christians don't have wisdom and they treat people badly and they hurt relationship. They hurt the church and God's nature It's His wisdom. He's full of wisdom and He, in His wisdom He saves us and blesses and blesses us and He gives us wisdom and then when we use His wisdom to bless people He's very happy. And then reminder if we don't have wisdom and just use our anger then uh, we can be uh, doing destruction rather than uh, building other people up and how can we have uh, better wisdom in, the, uh, in God. So all the points will be related to the theme.